Hey everybody, it's Andrew back again with another video and today we have the review of the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S. Let's find out if the Surface Pro 4 will be dethroned as the king of the two-in-ones. Let's find out if it's a buy or a don't buy. So we've unboxed the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S on Monday and we were really impressed with the screen and so far we like the fact that it comes with the keyboard in the box. Uh, we've been testing it ever since and now here is our full review of the Galaxy Tab Pro S. Let's find out if it's a Surface Pro 4 killer. Let's find out if it's the king of the two-in-ones. Well, so far, let's start off by looking at some of the ports. I'll take it out of its keyboard case and we'll go th through the different ang the two angles you get with the keyboard case in a minute. So far, what do you get is a gorgeous Super AMOLED 12-inch display with excellent viewing angles, beautiful color saturation. You get the inky blacks and you get the very white whites. Now, I was very impressed so far with the screen. It has a resolution of 2160 by 1440. And this by far is the best feature of this tablet. This is the star of the show, ladies and gentlemen. It's got great brightness. I believe it gets to 360 nits, although it's not the brightest screen compared to the Surface Pro 4 or the Dell XPS 12. It definitely is above average in terms of brightness and it does get very bright in terms of usage. You really will not be disappointed by this screen. Now, as far as ports are concerned, you get uh, on one side here is the microphone headphone jack, a USB type C, a speaker and these are side firing speakers and we'll get to the sound when we test the speakers later on uh, going along the top you have your power button your volume rocker up and down and that's about it you do have array microphones over here going to the other side you get your windows key button okay i think i mistakenly called that the power button in the unboxing that is the windows key button you have the second side firing speaker and that's it for the other side along the bottom you have the pogo connector for the included keyboard and we'll get to that in just a moment so those are the ports that you get with the samsung galaxy tab pro as far as the tablet is concerned i like the build quality um, as far as the materials used they use a very smooth back finish here it's got minimal branding you have the nf you have the nfc sticker there and this this does have nfc it has samsung branding there and it has an energy star saver there uh, so minimal branding not too bad uh, as far as on the front you have the samsung branding there and you have a webcam on the front and you have a webcam on the back there as far as the trimmings around it it's all metal it's metal construction solid construction i'm not disappointed at all with the build quality i think the build quality is pretty good i'm that's one area i don't think they skimped on nice build quality samsung now what happens when you put it into the keyboard like that it magnetically connects and there you have it the keyboard is a two position keyboard now i mistakenly thought it was one position when i unboxed it again i tried not to look at any other videos or any other reviews of this when i did get it on monday i wanted to have a totally unbiased opinion and what i didn't realize was that there are two angles and i'll thank some of the uh, people in the forums who pointed this out to me so you have this one angle right here and then you have a second angle down like that so you get two angles two positions and that's it this actually does work well when you're on a desk and you are watching media and you don't want it propped up all the way you want to you know you don't, you don't want it to be in this angle but rather you want it to be propped down it works pretty good uh, i have no complaints about it i do prefer the surface pro 4 type cover obviously for obvious reasons the fact that it has an infinite kickstand is the main reason there now the other thing I prefer the Surface Pro 4 over this is the fact that this does not have a backlight. This keyboard should have had a backlight as far as I'm concerned. But they, uh, Samsung for whatever reason, whether it be for cost cutting measures or really I don't know, they chose not to put a backlight in the keyboard. A big negative in my book as you know from my other videos if you've seen them. 
I am a big fan of backlit keyboards. This one does not have it. And that's where, if you're comparing, say, another device such as the Dell XPS 12, the Dell XPS 12, although it has one fixed position in its keyboard dock, that at least had a nicely, nicely backlit keyboard. Here, you don't get that. So big negative as far as I'm concerned so far with the keyboard. Now, speaking of the keyboard, now that we're looking at it, the keys are very close together. And let me show you up close here. They're not spaced out as much as, say, is the type cover or the keyboard on the Dell XPS 12 or the HP Spectre X2 or even the Lenovo Mix uh, 700. Here the keys are very close together and I found myself typing somewhat with accuracy, but I did find myself hitting other keys mistakenly and I wasn't getting the accuracy as I would really want. So another little negative on this is the fact that the keys are so close together. Another little negative as well is the key travel. It does feel somewhat nice, but the key travel is only 0.85. I believe anything over 1.2 is considered good key travel. Ideally, you want to get from 1.2 to even 2.0 millimeters. This has only 0.85 millimeter key travel. To me, that is a negative. And so overall, not a terrible keyboard, not the best in class. Now, as far as the trackpad is concerned, I found it a little bit undersized, as you can see here. And although the click was very nice, and it did work somewhat well, I did have a little bit problems with three finger gestures. It wasn't as smooth as, as I'd hoped, and I was finding myself having to use the touchscreen a little bit more often than I would normally do. But as far as overall usability, as far as a Windows trackpad, it's okay. It's not the greatest in the world. It's not the worst either. Uh, somewhat a few issues, as I just stated, but overall, a decent trackpad, not a deal breaker. Now, as far as performance is concerned, the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S didn't do as bad as I expected. Now, I say that because it has a core M3 processor with four gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabyte SSD. We'll get to the read write speeds of the SSD in just a moment. But under the Geekbench test, as you can see here, under a single core score, it did a 2175. Uh, under the multi-core score, it did, a, it did a 4223. So not bad considering this is not a powerhouse spec machine. It's running the Intel Core M3 6Y30 running at 1.51 gigahertz. It has, it's a one processor with two cores and four threads. So overall performance, not bad as far as the Geekbench test is concerned. I was expecting actually lower scores, ladies and gentlemen. This is actually higher than I expected. And what does that tell us as far as for gaming or for uh, more graphics pr processor intensive tasks? It probably is not the most ideal for that. You probably could do some light gaming on this, but nothing more. But for everyday browsing, watching YouTube, watching Netflix, doing some you know, word processing, Excel spreadsheets, light Excel spreadsheets, Microsoft Word, you'll be fine. For everyday use, this will do just fine. And it was pretty snappy for those tasks. Now, as you can see from the Crystal Disk Mark scores, it did pretty good considering this, again, is not using Samsung's own SSD. Rather, it's using a light on SSD, a more bargain basement SSD. But as you can see, it did a 540.2 on the read and a 176.6 on the right. If you go to the bottom and look at the 4K score, it did a 1732 on the read and a 71.85 on the right. That's not terrible, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm pleasantly surprised with the performance of the light on SSD, which also begs the question, well, if Samsung made this tablet, why didn't they use their more faster and their own faster SSDs? And that's a good question. I, I have a sneaking suspicion they did that because they wanted to save costs, save money on this production. And I think they made a mistake. Although not terrible, as you can see from the scores, but not, again, it's not a powerhouse, and then more should it be considered a powerhouse. Like I said, if you want to do gaming on this, that's probably not the machine for you. Now, speaking of the SSD, it's using the light on SSD, not Samsung's own SSD, which is a little bit of a surprise, but it didn't do as bad as I thought it was going to do. And as you can see from those Crystal Disk Mark scores, it wasn't terrible, wasn't the greatest in the world, but it wasn't the worst either. Now, as far as speakers and sound are concerned, I was impressed. 
The speakers got pretty loud and were pretty rich for that matter. So overall, good job Samsung on the speakers. Let's take a listen and a look at my latest video, which is the unboxing of this device, which I did on Monday. So let's take a listen to see how the speakers sound. Body, it's Andrew back again with another video, and tonight we have a very special unboxing. In my hands is the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S, the Surface Pro 4 competitor that we've been waiting for, and it's been finally released. Let's find out if it has what it takes to dethrone the Surface Pro 4 as the king of the two in ones. Let's see what's inside this box. So as you can hear, the sound was pretty good. As far as battery life is concerned, Samsung claims up to 10 hours. I didn't get anywhere near 10 hours. I got anywhere between seven hours and 745. So as you can see from the Battery Bar Pro stats here, you get 716 as the full runtime. That's about right. If you turn down the screen brightness, turn up the aggressiveness in terms of power saving, you probably can get it closer to eight hours or a little bit over eight hours, but nothing more. So as far as battery, not bad. You can uh, get anywhere from, again, seven to eight hours, depending on your brightness of the screen and what radios you have turned on and your level of aggressiveness in terms of power saving. But overall, it's about a 715 on average. Now, Samsung announced a pen along with this device uh, back at CES, and uh, it's been missing in action. So it has not been released by Samsung as of yet. And we do know that it's Bluetooth enabled. We do know, and I can confirm that it does not use the Wacom or Wacom technology. And we do know that it does not use the Entrick technology, because I tried that independently as well. So one neat feature that Samsung includes with the Galaxy Tab Pro S is a feature called Samsung Flow. And actually what it is, it's an app that utilizes Windows Hello. And if you're familiar with Windows Hello on the Surface Book and the Surface Pro 4, it allows you to log in via different methods. And that particular method with the Surface Book and the Surface Pro 4 it uses the Windows Hello camera. Here it utilizes another Samsung device. This time it's the Galaxy Note 5, among other devices that Samsung authorizes to do this and basically what it is it's an app on here that allows you to connect via Bluetooth or NFC and it allows you to unlock your device with the fingerprint reader so I'm gonna demonstrate that for you right now so if I put my fingerprint on there and look at that I'm being logged in on the Windows hello so great little feature another added bonus is that it allows you to connect to your phone via the hotspot seamlessly much like apple's handoff feature and all the continuity features of os 10 and ios 9.3 so as you can see there are there is some added benefit of having a samsung phone and a samsung device like the tab pro s so i just wanted to point that out i thought that was a kind of interesting feature so overall what do i think about the samsung galaxy tab pro s is it a buy or a don't buy well, it depends. I think it's a buy depending on how you're going to use this device. If you're planning on web surfing, Netflix, YouTube, light video editing, light Photoshop, you're going to be fine. This actually was pretty snappy. I was impressed with the Core M3. I thought I was going to get uh, worse performance than it actually showed, as you can see from the Geekbench test and the Crystal Disk Mark scores. So overall, I thought it was pretty good. But again, it depends on what you're going to do with this device. Remember, it only has four gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabyte SSD. Do I think Samsung could have used their own SSD rather than use the bargain light on SSD? Absolutely. But it wasn't terrible and it certainly wasn't a deal breaker. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, I like the fact that it got between seven and eight hours. Specifically, I got 715 and I kept my brightness at about 75%. So that's pretty good. I love the screen, the 12 inch Super AMOLED display. It has inky blacks and it's beautiful, bright, vivid colors. I thought Samsung nailed the screen with its uh, beautiful Super AMOLED display. And I love the three by two aspect ratio. This comes in at 899 and in the box you get the keyboard. So as far as a value is concerned, it's pretty much uh, a hit or miss. Now, uh, when I say that, I mean this. Look, you're getting a Core M3 processor, only four gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabyte SSD at an 899 price. 
Now, if you look at the Surface Pro 4, you get similar specs when you're looking at the Core M version. But once you step it up to the, the Surface Pro 4, Core i5, Core i7, you've already stepped up in price and you certainly stepped up in performance. So really what this is competing with is the Surface Pro 4 Core M and a Surface 3 with the Atom processor. So the price at $899 I think is a little bit high as far as I'm concerned. I think it should have come in at a couple of hundred dollars less. You're not getting premium pro level performance. You're getting somewhere down below that. And when I say that, that means they're skimping on certain things, specifically the SSD, specifically the RAM and the storage. Now, is that a deal breaker? No, because the star of the show is its beautiful 12 inch Super AMOLED, the screen. And when I say that, it is absolutely fantastically gorgeous. And I have to give kudos to Samsung once again, uh, certainly nailing the Super AMOLED display, which they are certainly known for Galaxy Note, uh, Samsung Galaxy S7 line and so forth. They really know how to do Super AMOLED like nobody else. As much as I love that beautiful 12 inch AMOLED display, there is room for improvement. I wish the keyboard had a backlight. I wish the trackpad was a little bit bigger and better. I wish this did come in at a couple of hundred dollars less than it does, especially since you're only getting a Core M3 and four gigabytes of RAM and only 128 gigabyte SSD. You're also getting Windows Home. You're not getting Windows Pro, which again, probably wouldn't affect too many people. But again, just those little things add up. And as far as ports are concerned, I feel that it should have had at least another USB Type-C port. It only has one. It serves as the charging port as well. So much like the 2015 MacBook Red, Retina follows the same suit in that it only has just one port. And for some people, that will be a turnoff and should stay away from this device. So it is a buy, ladies and gentlemen, but just depending on who you are as far as what you're going to do with this device, this is a buy with some caveats. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please hit the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's any other device you want me to review. I will try to make that happen, ladies and gentlemen. Great things are on the way here at AMD Tech. We have things for unboxing on the way. We have a special new series starting very soon. I'm going to get a bunch of Chinese tablets and I'm going to review them. I have the Andas. I've got the Chewies coming. I've got the Xiaomi. We've got a lot coming on the way to the studios to unbox over the next few weeks. So as they arrive in the studios, I will unbox them and then put them through full reviews. So stay tuned for that on my new Chinese tablet series coming very soon. So until then, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.